Hello, my lovely friends. My name is Ava, and today I have 10 romance recommendations with the captor captive trope. I'm a sucker for these types of romances, like the kidnapping, captor captive, like give it to me all day long. And it's funny because some of these are dark romance, but then other ones are not. <laughs> so um, I'm giving you a little bit of a wider range, um, but I love so many of these books, all of these books, and I hope that you all do too. Basically, the captor captive trope is where one of the individuals in the couple for this romance kidnaps or captures the other person in the couple. So um, I'm very excited to talk about these books, so let's get started. First one that I have to mention is Ivan by Sophie Lark. This is the first book in Sophie Lark's Mafia Underworld series, and it is about Sloane and Ivan. Um, Sloane has been hired to kill Ivan. Ivan is a very powerful and prevalent mafia boss, Bratva boss in Russia, and her uh, killing attempt does not go as planned. Um, Ivan ends up waking up right before she is able to kill him in his bed and he ends up kidnapping her and capturing her and locking her up in basically like a dungeon in his in his place and wants to interrogate her to figure out who hired her to kill him but he's a very very interested in her because he's like this is the closest anyone has ever gotten to killing me like she's literally looming over me about to slit my throat which no one has ever gotten that close how is this woman able to do that. What did she do? While he's interrogating her, he realizes he actually may not be able to live without her. And things get a little bit complicated, obviously. Um, but I absolutely adore the Sophie Lark romance. Everyone loves this one as well. I haven't heard a bad thing about this one from my friends. And Sloane and Ivan are just iconic to me. And I really love how the captor captive aspect of this book just like grows into something way more. Next, I have Hooked by Emily McIntyre. This is a kind of retelling inspiration romance of Peter Pan. Um, but if Wendy was with um, Hook. <laughs> James is our hero in here and his whole life, his main mission and goal is to get revenge on the man who murdered his parents. He thinks it is a coincidence one day when he ends up across a girl named Wendy in one of his clubs, who just so happens to be Peter Pan, the murderer of his parents, um, his daughter. So he plans on making one day his in every way possible. And there comes a point in the book where he ends up kidnapping her and capturing her because he thinks that she's in with her father when she's not whatsoever. Um, you, you know that as the reader when you're reading the book, um, but Hook doesn't know that. <laughs> the romance between James and Wendy was totally captivating and the capture captive part in here doesn't happen for a little bit later in the book because the two of them are getting to know one another towards the beginning and totally falling for each other. That's why James feels so betrayed when he thinks that Wendy has been in with her father this entire time. This one does get a little bit dark at moments. So the trigger warnings in here are violence, breath play, murder, death, kidnapping, torture, assault, and child abuse. So please be aware of the triggers. But overall, I thought this was a great romance and definitely one that other people should read. A book that is in the top five like favorite of the year so far for me is Lady Ruthless by Scarlett Scott. It's the first book in one of her historical romance series, the Notorious Ladies of London series. This book is actually free to listen to if you have Audible. It's on the Audible Plus catalog and I recommend reading it like right now. It is so good. I read this book like immediately after finishing Queen Charlotte, the TV show, and it, it totally fed my soul for like that enemies to lovers romance that's in Queen Charlotte. It has also other aspects in this book that remind me of Bridgerton, um, but I very much prefer this book to Bridgerton. So one of the reasons I love Scott Scott's books so much is because a lot of them start in the middle of a scene. So this book starts out with Lord Sin kidnapping Lady Callie. He's kidnapping her for revenge. He knows that she is the secret writer to this pamphlet paper that comes out every year, which is called um, like the Secrets of Lord Sin. Um, and she's the secret writer to the pamphlet and basically is trashing Lord Sin's name and ruining his reputation to where he cannot get married. So he's decided enough is enough and he's gonna kidnap Lady Callie and convince her to marry him as revenge. This definitely gave me Lady Whistledown vibes because of that secret writing aspect. There's also a few other things going into the plot as well. Lady Callie believes that Lord Sin is responsible for her brother's death. So that's why she's been writing these papers about him. The kidnapping captor captive part in here was absolutely iconic to me. Like he literally has to tie her to the bed at one point. <laughs> and uh, 
it was so good it was so good it starts out as captain captive so like you totally get thrown into that scene for a contemporary mafia romance we have hidden truths by neva altaj this is the third book in her perfectly imperfect series this book actually does not start out as a captor captive it starts out with sergey rescuing angelina from a certain dangerous situation and bringing her back home to his house um so he's rescuing her at first and then he realizes that angelina is actually the daughter to a rival mafia boss um but she's not disclosing that to him she's claiming i believe that she has like amnesia or doesn't remember who she is um when in actuality he from the first moment that he glimpses her like knows that this is this guy's daughter so he's actually keeping her under lock and key in his home and obviously through them being in this house together and everything they end up falling for each other angelina very reluctantly um but the moment that sergey sees her he knows that this woman is his there is trigger warnings in here you have gore violence abuse torture ptsd and guns sergey in here is dealing a lot with ptsd so please be aware of that before you go into this one if you want a monster romance i have assault to keep by opal rain this one is captor captive but it's <laughs> It's kind of hard to explain to you because it's basically like my town sold me to this creature and I can't leave him. <laughs> so that's not really a trope. So I think it does fall under the captive captive trope. So the heroine here, Rhea, she has been sold, basically not sold, but exchanged to be a Duskwalker's bride who is Orpheus. Orpheus is this monster creature that's on the cover. Um, he's a Duskwalker and once every 10 years he asks this village or this village gives him a bride in exchange for like magical protection over their village from demons. So she's in for a shock when this very scary monster turns out to be like the sweetest man creature ever who just wants a companion in his life, but he's not willing to let Rhea go. Like it doesn't matter how sweet and caring he is, like he's not letting her leave his sight. It very much is kept her captive in that aspect. Like she cannot leave his home, um, but it's also in part too for her own safety because he has the house protected from demons and demons will literally eat Rhea if she leaves the house. So um, it's part because he wants her in his life because he's starting to fall in love with her, but also in part of he wants to keep her protected. I don't want to say anything else because I feel like anything else could be a spoiler, but I absolutely love this monster romance. It's pretty long, so please be aware of that. There are trigger warnings in here for animal death, blood, gore, and killing. And this very much is more character driven than plot driven because it's about these two stuck in this home together, not stuck, like Orpheus wants Rhea to be there. Like he, he'll do anything to make this woman his, to have that lifelong companion in his life. Um, but Rhea is fighting tooth and nail to figure out how to get out of this situation without dying. Then she obviously gets to know Orpheus and ends up falling in love with him. And I thought it was beautiful. I of course have to mention Captive of the Horde King by Zoe Draven. This is the first book in her Horde Kings of Drakkar series. And Captive is literally in the title here. And I, I love this book. So much. This is the romance between Arakan and Luna. They both live on this planet called Drakkar. Um, Arakan's people, the Drakari, are natives to the planet, and Luna and her brother and the other human settlers in her village are all like human refugees to the planet. They're not treated very well from the natives. They have a lot of rules they have to follow, one of which is you cannot burn the land, and another one is you cannot kill any animals on the land either. Um, and so the village is kind of, the human village is starving at this point. And Luna's brother read somewhere in a book that if you burn crops, then the soil afterwards will become more fertile for new plants to grow. So he basically planned on just burning the crops um, but then the fire got a little bit out of hand and a bunch of things started burning. And what's one of the rules that they have to follow is you cannot burn the land. Um, so the Horde King, Arakan in here from a neighboring horde comes by to basically punish whoever burned the land. Luna in here really wants to save her brother's life and tells this man, this alien, I will do anything if you save his life. You can take my life instead of his. And so Arakan decides to take Luna as his captive um, and bring her back to his horde. She may not know it yet, but actually Arakan from the moment that he gets met eyes with her and knew that Luna was going to be his queen. Um, so I love this so much. Luna is fighting tooth and nail to like not integrate with their culture at all, even though she finds it very interesting. Um, and Arakan just wants someone to be his so badly. I love this alien romance so much. There's a reason why I'm hyping up this series so much. It is so 
good. Another book in this series that is also Captured Captive is Taken by the Horde King, which is book number five in the series. I'm not gonna talk too much about this one because it is book five in the series. There is like an overarching plot line that's going on throughout the entire series, which happens in this book. So that's why I recommend reading the books in order because that plays a major like plot point to this one. This one is interesting because it's Captured Captive in both aspects. So our hero in here, Rowan, is a Horde King and Mina is a human woman. Mina has been convinced by her human village from a different human village than book one um, to lure this Horde King to her so they can capture him and get information out of him. So at first Rowan is the captive to Mina and her people, even though she did not want him to like be captive at all. Um, and then something happens to where the roles are flipped and Mina becomes Rowan's captive instead. So I really enjoy this one because you get both aspects of the capture captive in here. And I, I love this. I love this whole series in general. So please read this one if you haven't yet. A Ruby Dixon one that I love is Drake, which is book three in the Corsair Brothers series. If you want to read this book, I recommend reading some other books before this one. So be sure to watch my Ruby Dixon guide video where you can figure out when and how you can read this book if you haven't yet, if you want to read them in order. But you could totally just read it as standalone if like you want to. Um, but there are like previous things that pop up in this book that makes sense to the plot. Anyway, besides the point, this is book three in the Corsair Brothers series. This is about Ruth and Strake. You got to read about Strake in book one in the Corsair Brothers series. He basically abandons these space pirates and these human women on his spaceship. And Ruth just so happens to sneak on the ship before he escapes. And she's been hiding in the air ducts in his ship for like weeks. And she's kind of like playing pranks and ruining things on the ship to kind of poke at him. Um, so like one of the things is I think she like takes all the seams out of all of his clothes to where like his clothes are falling apart and he thinks bugs are infested on the ship. <laughs> like it's so funny. But anyways, there comes a point where Strake ends up finding Ruth in the air ducts in his spaceship and kidnaps her and basically forces her to stay in his room, ties her to his bed and everything. The point in which he catches her, like the scene when he finally realizes like this woman has been messing with him is absolutely iconic to me. <laughs> it's so good. Um, but the captor captive part in here is just a small chunk of the book. It doesn't take place throughout the whole entire book. Um, but the ca I love the captor captive part of this book. For a historical, I have Heartless Duke by Scarlett Scott. This is book two in the League of Dukes series. So another Scarlett Scott book. Um, this is actually the series that takes place before the one I just talked about earlier in the video. This is book two in a series and the heroine in here, you read about her in book one and she had a little bit of a hidden identity and this is her story and her romance to figure out why she hid her identity and what's going on. The hero in this book actually kidnaps her to figure out who she is and if she's a spy or something and keeps her captive in his giant estate. And that's all I really wanna say about that one because anything else could be a spoiler, but the capture captive part in here is very interesting because there comes a point in this book where the heroine realizes and the hero realizes like, she's not really captive anymore. Like she is meant to be mine. There's no other place for her to be though. So she's gonna be here for the rest of her life because I'm in love with her. <laughs> like I really, really, really enjoyed this one. And the last one that I have to talk about is another historical. This is For My Lady's Kiss by Linda Needham. The captor captive part in this book isn't a large portion of the book, but it's absolutely my favorite part of this book. So our heroine here, she is the kind of like unofficial leader kind of like troop mom <laughs> to um, this village in Scotland. But um, there happens to be a Lord, a new Lord to the land. They haven't had a Lord in a while who shows up and is trying to kind of make this town a better town, village, town, whatever it is, um, make it into something great again. And McKenna, the heroine in here, is not too happy about this because this guy is like ruining the whole vibe of the village and town and not interested in like the people she thinks. And so she is not happy about this guy coming in here. Um, and she keeps throwing little wrenches in his plan and pulling little pranks on him and trying to ruin his, the things he's doing to better this village. And so he's like, enough is enough. And he's decided to kidnap her and take him to the castle that he lives at on in the town. And um, there comes a point too where he needs to keep an eye on her because she's escaped a few times. And so he forces her to braid her hair and uh, sleep in the same bed with him. And he has to hold the braid in his fist while he sleeps to know that she's not, not gonna get away from him. Um, so yeah, absolutely iconic. <laughs> I love this historical and I hope that y'all do too. It was so good. Anyways, there you have it. Those were 10 
chapter captive romance recommendations for you. Let me know down below if you have read any of these books or if you plan to. And if you have any recommendations in the comments, put them down below, please. Um, but anyways, thank you all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye, y'all.